Hi everyone, it's Dr. Bosworth and I am live again on Sunday night. Welcome to my, my channel. Uh, I am happy to be here on Sunday nights and I do live streams on Sunday nights to answer some questions in the keto world, but also to do things like sometimes give lessons on, some, on the most common questions or in many ways connect with people who have been just starting the ketogenic diet, wonder what their doctor might say and I give some of the answers that I tell my patients. So first of all, if you're new to my channel, I just wanna say thank you for joining me, welcome. Uh, the, live, uh, the live casts have been, uh, actually, let's see, uh, Sunday Night Wisdom, I like that. I'm just making sure, again, my mic is this new mic and I would love to see somebody give me a thumbs up that the, that the sound is working. One night I got started and couldn't, nobody could hear me, so I had to redo it. So. Uh, when you do this alone, uh, I get the, the, the importance of a, uh, a producer. Um, I would love to know where you're from, too. Uh, I have a, a classroom now on YouTube, and it does seem um, mythical. <laughs> you give this, uh, this uh, presentation to an empty room, but it's you know, filled with incredible uh, connections across the world. And I am a physician, an internal medicine physician. I take care of chronic health problems and I started on this journey two and a half years ago um, when I had learned a little bit about the ketogenic diet uh, in, um, actually on a podcast. I had heard a man named Dom Diagostino talk to Tim Ferriss and I love the way that, that Tim Ferriss has a progressive look, forward look. He uh, is known for biohacking and I have patients like Tim Ferriss. So sometimes the, the only way I really understood what some of my patients were doing is if I had listened to the Tim Ferriss show that they had listened to. Uh, and it was um, uh, a, a, an interview with uh, somebody named Dom Diagostino who is a scientist, a PhD doctor who studies ketones and he was studying brains and how to help them work um, uh, better. Uh, it is because of that uh, initial podcast that I really dove into understanding the ketogenic diet. And it brings me to um, three years later. Um, last uh, year, I was just about ready to push publish on this book, uh, which took a lot of courage, uh, standing outside the norm of medicine saying, can I, can I be one of the leaders of of possibly understanding this, uh, unpacking it from where it is, which is a lot of sciency and molecular uh, metabolism uh, research, and then put it in a place where patients could understand it. Uh, the number one patient in this book was my mom, who was fighting cancer at 71 years old, and her journey became life or death. If I wouldn't have uh, understood the ketogenic diet, I would have, she wouldn't be here, and I probably wouldn't be doing this either. So just a, um, a little story, the woman, the patient, my mother's name is affectionately called Grandma Rose in the story. And if you haven't read the book, it is the primary teaching tool to say, yes, a ketogenic diet really is a, um, um, I just wanna say that really did say hello from Sioux Falls. Someone from my own community is watching this. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. <laughs> Um, hello. So I just wanted to, to recap the book a little bit and give an update because Grandma Rose has recently had um, cancer invade her vision uh, and I was going to give an update to that because I've had a lot of people ask. So again, the book is my mother, 71 years old, typical American who had been overweight but not terribly overweight um, and then had been dealing with this cancer, had two or three rounds of chemotherapy before we started the ketogenic diet. And unfortunately, I was reading papers, uh, like National Institute of Health papers to figure out, is this ketogenic diet safe for my mom? And I could barely read as fast as I needed to keep up with answering the questions that we got one at a time. Uh, you know, the sorting what is, what is hocus pocus and what was actually science was not easy um, because there was a lot of naysayers two and a half years ago. And um, in the meantime, my mom couldn't afford for me to take six months sabbatical and go study it. I needed to figure it out as quickly as possible. And I'll tell you, um, that is where tonight's focus comes from, is I'm gonna show you the people that taught me and I'm gonna show a promotion for um, how much we need these evidence-based researchers and the kind of conferences that I'm gonna talk about in a minute. 
Um, let me finish up with the, the update on Grandma Rose, though. So Grandma Rose, you go through this book, you'll find um, the basics to ketogenic uh, in about every other chapter as the book starts out. I'm pretty skeptical, uh, and the, I tell a little bit about the research that I'm reading and some of the papers that made me say, okay, I think I can believe this. And then some of the other papers where I'm like, I don't think this has anything to do with human studies, and I don't think I can translate it to my mom. Um, and then uh, as the book goes on, we get a little lax in our ketogenic journey, kind of like most people do after they first start, and we have to get back on the bandwagon. How do we do that? Um, we then go through a stint where she got a very serious complication because her 71-year-old body was, act was acting more like a 100-year-old body. And as a physician taking care of aging patients, I could tell you this was destined to be a terrible outcome. And because of the ketogenic diet and some of the metabolism and the immune system augments that she was taking advantage of, um, she beat all the odds. I expected her to not do well um, because of the 20 years of taking care of patients. Uh, but we ended up anyway, by the end of the book, she had fasted for over 40 days at one part where she was really sick. Um, and by the end of the book, she is doing well without any chemotherapy at that time. Um, but that was two years ago. So um, I pushed, it was actually about a year and a half ago. Uh, I pushed publish on the book about a year ago now, and it has changed so many people's lives. I feel like I have patients all over the world that I've educated through a book, and it is quite an amazing social experiment. So if you've read the book, I'd love you to give me a thumbs up or uh, just let people know that your review of the book. Uh, um, if you haven't put one of those on Amazon review, I am an independent author, so the only way my book gets shared on Amazon is if there are positive and generous reviews. So for those of you that have done that, thank you very much. It is how the book has been so successful, so thank you. Um, in recent days, Grandma Rose had a her vision. She woke up one day with a very stabbing pain in her eye, and then her vision went from kind of fuzzy to almost black and white. Um, this has led to a couple of injections into her eyeballs with steroids, and we've really ramped up her ketogenic diet, taking her back to what Dr. Seafried would say is a press pulse uh, that we would use in a cancer patient. And I do some blogs about that and some uh, videos about that if you're curious about what that really means. Um, but what I, what I most want to talk about tonight is something called the Metabolic Health Conference. And the Metabolic Health Conference was uh, something that I found after I'd heard this podcast of Dom Diagostino and uh, Tim Ferriss. I started uh, like finding, I wanted to get closer to the bench of science saying, uh, I can't wait for a 10 year study. My mom is sitting right here and I, I have a bridge in my education. Who can help me? And so I actually reached out to uh, Dr. Diagostino and he invited me to this conference that he was having two years ago. The one in, two years ago was in uh, Tampa, Florida and I had already written some of the book. Um, I was ready to, um, I was really looking for affirmation from um, somebody else who said, what I'm reading in these science papers, does it actually work in patients? So I was looking for my tribe. I was looking for people who needed evidence-based medicine and that were able to translate um, it into, how could I use it in people today? And Dr. Diagostino uh, put together some of the most amazing uh, uh, teachers that you could ever have collected um, and many of which I didn't know before the conference but afterwards I, I went home and studied them uh, this is a picture of some of the uh, some of the people that are at this year's conference which is happening at the end of this month it'll be the third annual one and I would contend it is the best ketogenic conference out there um, I have um, I could go through and name most of the people in this picture. I'm going to tell a couple of quick stories because I just think it's so fun to see, you know, what happens in a conference and how, you know, the, the number of times I get uh, people saying, Doc, can you help my doctor? Can you teach my doctor? Um, or how do I find a doctor that um, understands a ketogenic diet? And I would contend it's been really hard to find uh, the people on the front edge of a ketogenic education uh, that isn't just using it in a hocus pocus kind of way, but actually using some science behind what they're doing. And I contend these are the giants that have led primary care physicians like me um, and others to be able to use it frontline so quickly. 
Uh, so a couple of ones I love to talk about. This is Adrienne Check, and she is a, a researcher who also looks at um, ketogenic diet in cancer animals, as well as using hyperbaric oxygen. But one of the highlights I learned about her, she lectured at that conference in Tampa Bay, Florida, uh, two years ago, she actually takes high school students and, set, and brings them into her lab in, um, in an internship uh, where they get to actually do some science that, uh, I have teenagers, I want to inspire them to do things that are meaningful and that have um, science in them that really do show how you can make a difference in the world. And just some of the cool things she does with the with the students in her lab inspired me. It reminds me of the things I do in my community where I had taken students to Haiti to say, this is what it looks like to do medicine without all those fancy hospitals. And connecting to the patient is still that valuable. And you know, when she talked about what she does in her lab and the rewards she gets for teaching students in high school how to run a protocol, how to use something evidence-based, how to set this up in a way that could translate into primary care clinics like mine, uh, it gives me goosebumps to remember her story. Uh, so if uh, if you haven't heard of Adrian Sheck, it's a great uh, you know just woman pillar in her community in Air I think it's Phoenix, Arizona that her lab is at. Amazing woman, but I didn't know about that woman until I went to this conference. And when I have gone to a few other conferences for a keto, for keto, um, you'll find that the if if you want the giants in the ketogenic. Um, uh, world, they're going to be here. They're going to be looking at the front line saying, teach us what you've learned in the last year. Teach us what you've learned in the last two years. Um, and I would contend that if if you're curious about the ketogenic diet, um, you know, most of the people that check into my channel, you can find keto and weight loss in lots of channels. But what I focus on is what other things should we be so excited about when it comes to a ketogenic diet? And some of those are the brain health, which is, again, one of the things that attracted me to Dom Diagostino. He's on this picture too, oh, I think. Uh, I don't see him on this picture. <laughs> he's like the head guy though. He's the one running uh, one of the, he's the leader in the MC and he's the one who uh, studied the Navy SEALs, works with NASA and works with brain performance in humans uh, using things like, hey, we should study to see if um, exogenous ketones are uh, beneficial for cognition. And I walked into his conference saying, no, I don't think, I think those people are all out to sell something and they're not, uh, there's no evidence behind that. And the truth was, I just hadn't, I hadn't seen those papers yet. Uh, despite trying and trying to find answers, it was places like this where I got to sit in a conference saying, oh my goodness, they have studied this. Here's where they've studied it. Here's the population size. And then I get to use that information to translate and say, did it fit my patients? Um, so the other thing that I would encourage you to do is if you've never been to a conference for metabolic health, this is the one to go to. Um, it is at um, the end of the month and uh, I'll go through a couple of things. It's in Los Angeles. It starts on the 31st and it goes through Sunday the 2nd, uh, excuse me, Sunday the 3rd. Uh, and each day is filled with um, not just presentations from scientists, but also patients and their journeys. Um, there's a couple of patients that I've followed over the over the years. Um, if you haven't heard of Andrew Scarborough, he I didn't know his story before I went two years ago. And Andrew Scarborough was a nutritionist who was 22 or 23 years old, and he had just graduated with either a master's or a PhD. Um, it was in Europe, so I'm not sure if the years added up the same for the same label here in America but he had had one of the highest degrees in nutrition and had never studied what a ketone was in his advanced nutrition training. And here he was on a train and suddenly he had a grand mal seizure. The next thing you know, he's having a brain tumor removed from his, from his body and it's a glioblastoma. And one of the first places that cancer has really been um, yeah, looked at was uh, glioblastomas, which have an incredible quick death rate and how uh, responsive they are to a low sugar, low carbohydrate, high fat diet, especially when you do the things that Thomas Seafried said. I'm gonna make sure I point out him too. He's actually another person that I quote in my book and I did reach out to him. I connected to him through this conference and I had read his you know, major textbook on the you know, metabolic um, uh, theory of, 
um, cancer. I'm getting, I'm getting that title wrong, but um, he's, a, he's a giant. He's out of Boston College, and he gave one of the most inspiring lectures saying, no, you can't believe what we see on the front lines, and here's how they're doing it, and here's the protocol, and this is what they're doing. And I would have never known that had we not had this conference. So, um, you know, he's another one of my, my heroes. Eric Westman is another person I've met at several of the other keto conferences as well, but I first met him at this conference, the Metabolic Health Summit. And he was an internal medicine physician like me. He was at Duke. Uh, he was really focused in on weight loss and metabolism. And he was, you know, years down his journey for using ketosis as a way to help patients lose weight. But much like most physicians, they didn't have a voice. They didn't have other people saying, well, have we studied that? Have we studied that? And Eric Westman is one of the scientists who's put forth so much of the effort to get those first few studies done because nobody would fund them. Um, if you haven't been on a ketogenic diet yet, you'll see that it's quite uh, economical and there's not, there's not any medications that you need to be on. So there goes a sponsor from Big Pharma. And so it's people like Eric Westman that did um, the first of trial saying, here's what we saw with the diabetic, diabetic patients that used a ketogenic diet. Um, so let's go back. I just want to point out this website, themetabolichealthsummit.com. And um, this is a code that when you go to book the conference, if you type in DR Bosworth, um, MHS, standing for Metabolic Health Summit, you'll get 15% off. This is not a commission that I make. I'm just super excited that this summit is happening. So I reached out to say, is there any way I can help? And they said, yes, there is. Help us promote it. We'd like to sell out. We know that if a conference is sold out and the funds going back to supporting the research on the front lines, uh, you can't help but be um, um, not just motivated to be the scientist, but also the funding that comes from a successful conference like this is um, it's invaluable. Uh, a couple things I like to point out. I wanted to make sure I said this on there. It doesn't. It's not just for medical professionals. Um, now it's the kind of evidence-based science that I will get medical credit for continuing medical education as as I attend this summit, and that's really important to me. I've searched and kind of weeded out to say the only place I want to spend my continuing medical education hours the last two years has been in the metabolic health world. Getting a conference that's evidence-based in all in one place that's not an online course, this is the first I've seen. I think there has been one that I missed, but this uh, has continuing medical education points because it's, it is that advanced and it is that accredited. They're um, uh, partnered with Cedar sinai Hospital right there. Uh, in Long Beach, uh, south of Los Angeles. Uh, so, But it's not just for medical professionals. These are the stories of the patients who have lost weight. These are the leaders in the ketogenic world who've said, you know what, after some of that research from Dom Diagostino, we started using that research to get those, um, those tools in the hands of patients. And uh, amazingly, it doesn't require uh, FDA approval. Some of these chemicals have been on the market for a long period of time. We just didn't know that they had the benefits they did. So um, again, if you use this code, uh, you will get 15% off. It is not a commission to me, but I do want to be as helpful th to them as possible. I said uh, that I hoped they were sold out after this podcast tonight um, because the other thing that they're asking me to do is that there is a VIP, uh, there's a VIP uh, mixer. When you go online, you'll see that. But there's also um, a fundraiser for two organizations that I send patients to all the time. And um, I want to make sure that I get to that. Um, let's go to, I'm going to go here. And then um, um, this is one of the foundations called the Charlie Foundation. Um, actually, uh, shoot. Well, that's not going to work. I'll have to do that differently next time. <laughs> I'll just tell you what they are. Um, the One of them is the Charlie Foundation. Uh, that is an organization where they, um, uh, they focus on childhood seizures and using the ketogenic diet to help kids with seizures. Um, this is uh, uh, one of my go-to places whenever someone calls me or reaches out to me and says, is it safe in kids? And I'm like, just go to the Charlie Foundation and look at what their organization has done, not only in the research of a ketogenic diet, but for 
children with seizures and how much evidence-based uh, medication or evidence-based uh, research they've put into the brain development and the the brain repair that happens in childhood seizures and the Charlie Foundation has just been a pillar of a leader just a giant of a leader in that space um, the other part the other organization that's very uh, near to me near and dear to me is the max love organization and again max love has to do with kids with cancer um, when I look at my mom, she's 71 years old, she had cancer and that cancer is now invading her eye. Her eye has dead cancer cells floating in it and it's kind of stuck in the eyeball and it's affecting her, her vision. Um, but what that's called is, that's called a complication from having cancer and having chemotherapy or having, it's not from chemotherapy, it's actually from the cancer. Um, and you look at the kids who now 85% uh, of children who have cancer are going to survive. And what happens is they get chronic illnesses from the tax their body goes through when they've had cancer. And the Max Love organization is all about raising up the quality of life and the sustainable lives that can happen in ch children who survive cancer or children with cancer. And boy, they have become a voice and an advocate for the ketogenic diet because of its anti-inflammatory effects, because of their ability to uh, look at um, how do you repair a system uh, quickly, how do you grow uh, uh, and repair you know, that atrophy of muscle after a chemotherapy or after cancer treatment. Um, the Max Love organization. So both of these organizations are what all of the fundraisers are going to go towards uh, at this Metabolic Health Summit uh, for the gala the night, um, I believe it's on Thursday night, it might be Friday night. I gotta look at the schedule again. Uh, either way, um, one, of the, one of the benefits of um, this summit was that in the mixer right before that, I get to do some interviews of all of the st superstars here in, um, or well, who are attending the, the ketogenic uh, metabolic health summit. So one of my asks for you is, as I have, am so excited to be someone who is just ready to promote this, uh, this conference. Uh, again, it is my, f I have counted down for it. It is the one where I would scrape, borrow, and beg to get the resources to be able to go to it or, or to have my, my, I asked my mom to watch the kids while my husband and I are at this conference because it is my number one of a year. This is where I wanna make sure I never miss. So to get to go to that and then be uh, asked to interview or at least to, uh, to get some snippets from uh, all of the people who are speaking at the conference is a super generous gift. And one thing I'm missing in order to be prepared for that is that I have a tool that I would like to use and it's on Instagram. Um, the Instagram would be a way that you could follow uh, this Metabolic Health Summit. Uh, while I'm there and getting clips to say, if you were looking at, uh, if you were able to talk to 100,000 patients saying, what is it about the ketogenic diet that you think they should know? Um, I'm gonna use those kinds of questions to say, let's bridge from the bench scientists to the audience that needs to hear about the ketogenic diet and not in some whimsical way, but these are your researchers, these are the bench scientists who hold the secrets so that doctors like me and doctors like my colleagues can say, all right, just give me the science. My, my goal is to help people without hurting them. And so I do need evidence to show me where is this coming from and how can I apply it. So the tool, the tool that I need for this health conference, which is at the end of this month, is you, if, if on Instagram you have 10,000 followers, you get this really cool tool that would make it easy for me to promote these uh, videos out to the world. Uh, so I only have like 3,000 followers on my Instagram page. So I would like you to go to Instagram and look for D-R-B-O-Z. Um, there's an underscore and then my name in at Bosworth MD. Uh, but D-R-B-O-Z, you're gonna find me, you're gonna find a picture of me there. Um, again, I don't have a lot of followers on Instagram and the only way you get this tool is to get to 10,000 followers. So I am gonna shamelessly ask you to follow me on Instagram so that I can use that tool while I'm at this conference. Um, again, it just makes it really easy for all the videos that I do live to be, uh, to be spread on the Instagram posts. And I don't have that and you can't buy it. You have to get followers to get that. <laughs> so I am asking for you to do that. Um, just a couple of other uh, housekeeping things. I launched something uh, on Friday night that if you didn't see it, I have a new playlist that I am uh, repurposing. Um, about uh, November of this past year, 
Um, I had um, an, an overwhelming popularity for the four, four or five weeks before uh, this event happened. Uh, and I had someone reach out to me and ask me if I would consult them. Um, we decided to do this live on her Facebook page and the live posts were something I did and kind of doesn't think about again, but they have become very popular. So I am trying to improve the recording or at least clean up some of the parts that kind of, we just did our very best on those first recordings. So I have just launched the first of those interviews. I have eight more to come and I'm telling you they are the best. If you're on a ketogenic journey and you are looking for what do I tell my patients when they have a stall? What do I have to tell my patients when they aren't losing weight? And how do we get through that? What is the What are the evidence-based rules that I apply to patients? And I go through that with this patient. So if you haven't, um, if you haven't subscribed, you're gonna to wanna to do that and ring that little bell because that's how you'll hear when I put out the posts, uh, put out those videos. I do write uh, an article about each one of these, just kind of summarizing what I talked about and putting any resources into those. And you can find that on my website, bozmd.com. Uh, if you haven't signed up for those uh, that email list, I'll try to put an email out every time I put up a post too. Again, I'm getting a little better at all this, so for those of you that uh, have been following me all along, hopefully you see a rapid and sustainable uh, learning curve to um, not just how to YouTube, but also communicate. How do you communicate with an audience where lots of people are at different stages of the journey? Um, if you're at a beginning stage, I will tell you again, this is my favorite teaching tool. Uh, these are the love notes that I wrote my mom. When she was sick, I was taking her little lessons of what she could handle and what she could learn. I taught her in person, and then uh, thanks to the nudging of my husband over and over again, he said, you should put that in the book. You should put that in the book. So thank you for telling me to do that, and I finally listened. So again, I'm signing off. Uh, I am um, improving health one ketone at a time. So if you'd like to continue following me, make sure you subscribe, push that little button and go to Instagram and become my follower, even if it's just for the month so that I can get this tool. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for tuning in and I'll check out your posts and answer your questions um, when I get through with this. <laughs>